Okay guys and gals, this video is on the Garmin DriveCam GPS Navigator for your vehicle. This flagship model has got an easy to read 7 inch high resolution display, a built in dash cam, video storage on the device and in the cloud, forward collision and lane departure warnings, live traffic and weather, live fuel prices, hands free calling, and customizable smartphone notifications, this GPS will save you time and money. The dash cam might save you from a lawsuit, and did I forget to mention, it may save your life. So stick around for the DriveCam 76 unboxing, setup, and on-the-road demo. All right, let's open this up and see what we've got. Okay. This looks like the device itself, the GPS. Looks like it's got a nice protective uh, plastic cover on there. We'll peel that off later. Get this off of here. We've got some literature. Looks like this applies to their RV related unit too. We'll set that aside. We've got our suction cup that's going to go on our windshield and we're going to show you a, a real world uh, use of this product later on. We've got a cable and uh, I did a little reading up but it looks like this cable has an antenna built into it so uh, you just can't use any uh, USB cable to run this thing so you don't want to lose that. And we have a um, adapter for our vehicle, and it looks like there is uh, no AC adapter in this. And uh, I'm going to show you a little tip here in a second, once I get this stuff out of the way, on uh, a way to make setup a little easier for you. So let's uh, move this stuff, get that protective screen off, and we'll continue on. All right, let's familiarize ourselves a little bit with uh, the details on this new Garmin. What we want to do is uh, turn this drive cam 76 around, and the first thing you're going to notice is you've got a little symbol here for on off, and that's how you're going to turn it on and off. We won't do it now. It's, you know, fresh from the store, so it probably doesn't have a charge on it at all. And uh, this is where we're going to connect our cable. Now, they don't give you an AC adapter, and I'll give you a tip on that in a minute. But that's where that's going to go, and that's also where the cable's going to go when we uh, put it into our cigarette lighter adapter that they do provide. Uh, this is the dash cam, and that is adjustable left and right. And uh, you're going to be uh, adjusting that a little bit once you get it in your dashboard of your vehicle. The other thing we've got here, too, is uh, this is your, your speaker. And that's one thing I love about my old uh, Garmin is it was nice and loud, you know. I'm not getting any younger, and the louder the better for me. So down here, we've got a couple micro SD card slots. Now, you can see this one has a card in it. And, you know, to get these in and out, you just give them a push, and they pop out a little bit, and you slide them out. Sorry for bumping the camera there. And uh, this one's empty by default. This is for additional maps. Now, they give you a 16, bit, uh, 16 gigabit card for your dash cam. But you can go as high as 256 because these are programmed to overwrite uh, once they're full. I'm sure you can change that setting. But by having more memory in there, you're going to get a lot more footage. And I, I know I'm going to be switching that out for a 256 uh, gigabyte micro SD card. So anyways, the, the tip I wanted to show you is, and I won't lie to you, I had this thing out of the box earlier, but one thing I noticed was uh, I tried plugging this into my laptop USB. And the first thing I noticed was this is pretty dim. And I'm going to show you how, uh, how dim it is. So I'm already in my laptop here. Let's go ahead and let's get this plugged in. And this is a, 
a uh, USB-C, which is pretty nice. I mean, you would want it plugged in like this with the cord facing down, but if you did it by accident the other way, it's still gonna work. Go ahead and plug that in. Let's see if, okay, it's gonna wake up. Now, this is actually appearing a little bit brighter than what it does in real life. My, uh, my Apple iPhone's doing a good job of adjusting for low light conditions. But you can see here, we've got a, a low battery uh, signal here. So let's, uh, let's go ahead now and see if you can see the difference. I keep getting myself in the reflection here. Let's uh, unplug this from the laptop. And what you want to do is grab your charger from your phone. This is one from one of my iPhones. And I'll plug it in there and we'll plug it into the wall adapter. And this should wake up again. All right, now I, I can see the difference already because it's AC adapter. And that was that tip I was going to show you. You know, don't try to hook this up. And the reason that is, is your, your laptop is only putting out about 0.5 amps, I think. And a, a wall adapter is like 2.2. So you're going to have a lot easier time of it. Uh, like I say, this doesn't truly show how dark it is because my iPhone's doing a great job. But trust me, you'll see the difference right away. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and set this down and go through the steps of configuring this. All right, let's do the initial setup on this. I'm going to plug back into my AC wall adapter. And that should fire it up automatically. Okay, and uh, let's pick our locale. In my uh, case, it's the United States. And we'll say okay. And I want American English. And we'll say okay. And we'll accept on the end user license agreement. And uh, this uh, portion of the setup wants us to connect to our smartphone uh, and the app called Garmin Drive. I, I don't want to do that right now. I'm just going to skip that. But I will show you how to do that later. So let's skip that. We're going to connect to our Wi-Fi. Now this is uh, something we don't want to skip because the first thing we're going to want to do is get our updates on there if it needs any. So let's go ahead and uh, pick our Wi-Fi and I'm going to put in my password and I will fast forward so uh, I don't reveal my password to you guys. Not that you do anything. I trust you. Okay, and uh, basically uh, what this is asking is, is if we consent uh, to Garmin collecting and using and sharing your device data. Well, um, I know uh, from my experience that sometimes this, uh, this data can also show if they're having any problems and that can help them improve the product. So I'm going to say yes, but you can say whatever you want. All right. And uh, this is uh, registering the product, email address, offers, and promotions. I'm going to skip that for now. And we can register your product with Garmin Express. And now I'm going to agree to this uh, license agreement. And camera placement. Uh, I'm going to take the defaults on all of these. I can change them later. And I'm going to say normal car, even though I have a pickup truck. They might be referring to something a little taller. So I'll just say save on normal. Okay. And this wants me to point the camera directly forward. Well, my camera's facing down. So I'm just going to say okay to that and say done. And uh, do I want to start the dash cam recording automatically each time? Um, I don't know. I'm going to say no to that. Uh, this comes with a 16 gigabyte micro SD card, but it'll overwrite awful quickly. And uh, I'm going to use the dash cam when I, when I want it. So I'm going to say no to that. 
And uh, when I do record, though, I, I do want audio, so I'll I'll check that and click save. And that's it. You know, we're uh, we're initially set up, and we've got our uh, we've got our Wi-Fi connected. But what we want to do now, and what's pretty important, is to make sure that we're uh, up to date. You know, so let's uh, click this gear down here. And that gear represents all sorts of settings. But the one we're concerned with right now is updates. So let's go ahead and click updates. It's going to check for us. All right. So this says the uh, map is up to date. But the software, there is an update available. So uh, I'm going to say install all. And... This is saying it's going to be two minutes. Now, if the maps needed updating, I know from experience that the maps can take uh, anywhere from 45 minutes to a couple hours. So this is definitely something you don't want to do an hour before you're taking off. You want to, you want to get your maps updated days before you take off on your trip. So remember that. But anyways, let's go ahead and start this. Now, it also says, you know, if an error occurs, you know, for some reason you're having trouble with your Wi-Fi. Well, you could install Garmin Express on your laptop and then um, your USB cable connected to your laptop and update it that way. And I've, I've got a video out there for that if it resorts to that. But uh, I think it's pretty cool uh, that we can go to Wi-Fi. So I'm going to say start and it'll reach out to my Wi-Fi network. And this says it's only going to take a couple minutes, so I'll uh, I'll cut the uh, waiting portion out of this and let it do its update. I'm sure it's going to want to reboot the unit too, so we'll pick up after the reboot. Okay, we rebooted after our update, and it's coming uh, back up again. And now we know that the software on the device is the newest. I always just say accept all on any update. So anyways, let's go ahead and uh, say accept all on these end user license agreements and agree to that. Okay. And uh, this is a, a prompt for my dash cam coming down. I'm not going to worry about that now. But uh, anyways, we are all set as far as the initial setup. And uh, I can't stress enough how important the map updates are too. You know, if, if you don't do that and you get into a big city where there's been construction, you don't want to miss that new exit that the GPS doesn't know about. And, and while we're talking about it, I, this is the reason I prefer a GPS over a smartphone. You know, all these young kids are going to say, oh, yeah, you don't need a GPS. Just use your smartphone. Well, here's, here's a couple of uh, reasons that you don't want to use your smartphone. First of all, when I use my smartphone in my map program and plug it into my Ford uh, F-150, you know, it'll, uh, it'll be working fine, the map program, as long as I have, you know, phone uh, service in the area. Now, I've uh, learned from experience that when I'm camping and I'm up in the mountains, um, a smartphone isn't automatically just going to download a map for you. And, uh, and so what's going to happen is, is, let's say you have a medical emergency. And uh, we were at a campground that had no Wi-Fi and no phone service. So we couldn't even use Wi-Fi calling. And what if I have a medical emergency and I need to get my wife to safety or vice versa? Well, as long as you did your updates, this GPS is going to work in the continental United States in my case. And I don't have to worry about it downloading a map. So I could do a search for, you know, hospital nearby. Uh, personally, I would rather find a, a firehouse nearby because I know there's probably a good chance we can get a medic there. And then her transport to a hospital or mine would have a medic who could save her life. So when I said this GPS might save your life, 
There's a couple different ways, but that's one of them. But anyways, that initial setup is done, and we're going to cover setting up the uh, Garmin Drive app on our phones because that's going to be necessary for us to get the live traffic, and there's some other cool features on there with the drive cam uh, I wanted to show you. So let's uh, cut over to that, and I can show you how to get the Garmin Drive installed on your phone first and then uh, connect it through Bluetooth to your, uh, your, your drive cam 76. All right, I'm going to show you how to install the uh, Garmin Drive app on an iPhone. On an iPhone, you need an iOS of 15.0 or higher. Uh, and in an Android world, you need 9.0. I think the iPhone 6S is about as old as you can go, and I'm not sure in an Android, you'd have to check that out. But anyways, on an iPhone, you just go into the App Store, and we're going to type in Garmin. Space Drive. And this top one is not it. Drive safe and save. But this is it right here. Garmin Drive. That's the one you want. So let's hit the uh, download and open that up. And it's a free app. So, but anyways, uh, that's as simple as that is. And then we'll give you another uh, introduction on how to connect it to your new Garmin GPS. We'll also have some information on opening that app and what features it can deliver to your GPS. All right, so let's show you how to connect your Garmin Drive app. You know, you've already gone up on the internet and installed it on your phone and uh, so let's fire it up here and they want to know what type of Garmin device we have in our case it's a navigation device and what we have to do now is we have to find our device and it's already set up so all we have to do is go ahead and click find Garmin device And it found it. It truncated the name a little bit, but that's okay. It's the only one running in the house. So now this is saying, hey, you know, the Jim's uh, 14 Pro is requesting. And I'm like, yeah, it wants to know if it's okay to pair. I'll say yes. And what I want to do now is click pair on the uh, Garmin Drive app on the phone. All right, so uh, a code came up on the Garmin. It's 620377. So let's go 620377 and click pair. All right, and uh, this is just saying use Bluetooth uh, to filter notifications. I'll show you how to do that. But let's say allow on this. Anything that the phone asks you to do, say allow and say continue on your Garmin Drive and uh, activate the vault. Um, it's probably going to want me to log in. It wants me to pick my Wi-Fi first. All right, so we're done here. And it may prompt you to either sign in or create a uh, Garmin account, okay? And I already had mine, so what you can do is just use your email address, the one of your preference. Make sure you've got at least eight characters in your password and uh, one special character and one uppercase. And then log in and uh, it'll remember that. And uh, it's important to do that because this vault they're talking about, it gives you a freebie uh, 24 hours of storage up in the cloud. Keep in mind, you never lose it on your device unless it gets overwritten. The other Garmin Vault subscription plans available is a $4.99 plan for seven days of storage for your dash cam videos up in the cloud. And the other one is for $9.99 and that gives you 30 days. So, you know, it's up to you. If you want to grab one of those plans, it gives you a little more time to get that data if you need it.
I'll stick with a freebie for now and see how it works out. That's it for the uh, Garmin Drive. Now there is a couple of features here that I, I thought was pretty cool. You know, I mean, this is obviously something you want to do in the parking lot or uh, in the, you know, rest area or wherever you're at. But, you know, you could type in, uh, you know, here's one that I typed in before. I can say, I could search for Tampa, Florida. Or let's let's search for something different. Let's let's say Vero Beach. And there's Vero Beach, Florida. All right. So now what I can do is, as long as we're paired, as long as the device is on, as long as we're in the Garmin Drive app, I can hit Send to Device, and boom. All right. And this is talking about travel history, you know. And we just say yes to this. I want to save my travel history. Please drive to highlighted route. Okay, so look look how easy that was. We didn't have to reach over uh, and uh, reach out to this thing on the uh, windshield of our vehicle and start typing in the names of towns. We did it from the convenience of our smartphone. And the other huge feature in the smartphone, let's get out of here for a second, but... Uh, I think it's under the gear here, under traffic. All right, we want to make sure that's checked. That's going to communicate with our uh, smartphone and give us live traffic updates. But that's another great reason to have the Garmin Drive. Uh, also, it's going to allow you to go in and uh, grab a hold of your, uh, your videos that uh, get saved, I think they automatically get saved uh, once you get in uh, within distance of your Wi-Fi. And I don't think it'll do it over your cell service. All right, so that's it for setting up the Garmin Drive app. Uh, pretty easy. Make sure uh, if the Garmin Drive app asks you about location awareness, it's always, uh, you know, it's going to work better for you. So don't say only while you're using the app, uh, say always. The other thing I wanted to show you that I thought was super important for me, I don't know about you, but um, when you connect this to Garmin Drive, now there are notifications you can allow as far as emails and texts and uh, you know phone notifications. And personally, I, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want any notifications. I'm going to turn them off. Uh, you know, the, the whole point of a, a safe drive is to concentrate on the road and it, uh, your GPS for good directions, but these notifications uh, I don't want. So if we hit the gear and now we go to wireless networks, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi settings because it is communicating with the phone of Bluetooth. Now we want to click on smartphone services. Okay, and here's our smart notifications. Now, what I want to do is turn them all off. You can see there's all sorts of things, social networks, calendar, email, you name it. I, I don't want that coming up on my GPS. I'm, I want to stay a little safer than that. So I'm going to deselect them all by clicking Select All and Save. And uh, we'll uh, perform that little trick Garmin told us about. Instead of hitting the back button eight times, we can just depress it and hold it, and it brings it back to the home screen. So. Wanted to show you that uh, about the notifications. This portion of the video is dedicated to features and settings that I felt were real staples to the DriveCam 76 product. And not only that, they weren't self-evident when I went to configure them. I had to dig into the manual and I thought I would save you the trouble. Now, this product obviously has all sorts of settings. And, you know, you're just going to have to... Uh, go through those if they interest you, but these are the ones that I felt were the most important to get me up and going. The features and settings we're going to talk about are setting your home icon for your address, syncing your contacts for hand-free phone calls, finding gas stations and prices, understanding the gallery and the vault, and hands-free command tips. So let's get started. One thing you want to make sure you do is uh, fill out the information for home. That way, no matter where you travel to, you can easily click on where to and home, and it'll bring you back a reverse map of the trip. So if you haven't filled it out yet, just click on where to, 
and then go home and then just go ahead and uh, enter your address or you could just click the use the current location and uh, once it's done click save and you are done you'll be able to easily use the home button to get home from whatever trip you take all right let's do a quick review on how to sync your phone contacts on your iphone over to your gps so you can make hands-free phone calls first thing we want to do on the iphone is we want to go into settings and we're going to click on bluetooth you can see we've got two different garments and the one you want to pick is uh, the second one down that has BT. And once you're in there, you want to turn on this switch for uh, syncing contacts, okay? And now that you've done that, you can get out of settings. And what you want to do is you want to go to the back of your Garmin and hold that power button for a couple of seconds. And it'll prompt you to turn it off. And don't just hit it quickly. This is going to give it a, a full power off. And then go ahead and turn it back on. And the reason we have to turn it off and turn it back on again is uh, it won't recognize the change in Bluetooth until it goes to negotiate again. Once we turn it back on, it should see the iPhone. It should know it's got permissions. And... Um, in, in this case, I did not have Garmin Drive going, so I think that's, uh, that's a little separate. I didn't have to have that running. But let's accept all here. Agree. And let's, uh, let's try it and make sure it works. This is our uh, camera reminding us to align it. All right, so now let's try a hands-free phone call. Okay, Garmin, call Old Forge Camping Resort. Calling Old Forge Camping Resort. And I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to bug those people. But that's how easy it is to uh, sync your contacts. And uh, this is pretty cool stuff. If you've got an older vehicle and you want to be able to have some hands-free features, it's going to deliver that for you. And that'll do it for syncing your contacts and making hand-free phone calls. I'll show you an example on how you can check gas prices while you're on the road. Make sure your smartphone is on and your Garmin Drive app is running. And it's as simple as clicking on where to and then categories and then gas stations. All right, and there they are. Now, well, sometimes the price doesn't show up. You can see the Sunoco didn't want to show us anything. But uh, we can see gas prices there, and we can just pick one of those. And we can go and uh, get the lowest price gas we can. Please drive to highlighted route. It's that easy. All right, let's talk a little bit about the gallery and the vault. The gallery is where we... Uh, go into our GPS to see footage that's been saved from the dash cam. And the vault is that storage up in the cloud. So if we open the gallery, and we're gonna get this warning all the time that the dash cam can't record while we're in the gallery, we always say yes. And you're gonna see a couple of things here. You're gonna see these videos here are uh, in the vault already. And they have nice check marks next to them saying they're totally synced. If we had just saved a video, it would probably show an up arrow that it was syncing. And how do we get them up there? Well, uh, all of our footage is under unsaved, and it shows the dates. And we know there's an incident that we want to uh, put up in the vault from this 12-minute video. So let's go ahead and click on that. And we can review it by taking the uh, slider. Let's... Let's go on the slider and let's go forward more. All right, so let's say we, um, we're looking at this video and we want to stop it at the exact time of the accident. Let's go and stop it right here. Let's say uh, this is at the moment in time it occurred 
and you see it happening, what Garmin is going to do is they're going to take a little bit before and a little after, and they'll end up with a 30-second snippet of the accident. So we're satisfied that we've stopped it right at the time of the accident. We're going to hit save. Okay. So now we know that this incident on the memory card will not be overwritten, uh, even if that card gets full and it's on its way to the cloud. Let's verify that. And sure enough, there's that 237 timestamp, and it's got an up arrow, and that tells us it's going up to the cloud on the vault. And we'll fast forward here until that becomes a check mark. All right, so that took a little over five minutes, but we can see now that that 2.37 p.m. has a check mark instead of uh, an up arrow. Keep in mind, the whole time we're doing this, we're on Wi-Fi. This isn't going to work unless you're on Wi-Fi. All right, so let's get out of the gallery. We don't want any conflicts with the Garmin Drive app. And let's go ahead and open up Garmin Drive. And let's go into the vault. Now, I will say what you have to remember is that the time that we see on the vault is not uh, indicating the time the video was taken because the video was taken on February 24th and uh, I know darn well it wasn't at 1130. So always remember that the timestamp that you see on the vault is the exact time that you hit save and sent it up to the vault. But keep in mind that if we go into the video, we'll be able to see on the bottom. And, and if you turn the phone uh, to landscape, it will uh, it'll be a lot larger. I can show you that. All right, and uh, if you look at the timestamp down at the bottom, it'll be correct, and the date will be correct too. So anyways, you review that and you're, you're happy with everything. And now what we want to do is, uh, I can just pause this for now. I want to do a couple things. I want to uh, show you how to save to your phone. And it's downloading to the phone. So now we got multiple copies. All right, and it tells us our video is saved. The other thing you can do too is, let's say you get a call from your attorney that says, hey, uh, I really need to see that video. You could click on Secure Share and uh, it'll send a secure link. And we can send that either with a message or a mail. I won't go through all that for you, but that's kind of cool too, you know. So now they're going to be able to watch the video from the cloud. And let's prove that, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of drive for a second. Let's prove that it made it to our phone. So let's go into our photos. And sure enough, there is our video. And uh, we can watch it, verify that it all worked. And, and that's it. So... You know, I hope you have a better understanding of the gallery and the vault. You know, when I when I first saw those times on the vault, it, it kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm like, oh no, there's something wrong with the time zone or something. And, and it wasn't at all. I just had to understand that, that this date stamp is just when you saved it up to the cloud. And, uh, you know, that's it. So... I hope that has helped you understand the gallery and the vault a little bit better. All right, and the last feature I wanted to talk more about is the hands-free commands. Anytime you go to talk to this device, you have to start it with the words, OK Garmin. And you can see that by just saying that, I woke it up. If we wait, that'll go away. And when you do use that command, make sure that you know what you're going to say because she won't wait for you too long. When you go to make your command, know what you want to say and state it right away. Now I'm going to show you some examples of hands-free commands. Okay, Garmin. Gas stations. Which result would you like? Two. Going to Mirabito on Bartell Road in Cicero, TWN, New York. 
And keep in mind, you have to have your smartphone running the Garmin Drive app to get those prices. So make sure that's running before you give that command. You know, my advice to you is, is make sure your smartphone is on the entire trip and make sure Garmin Drive is running the entire trip for the smoothest operation. Okay, Garmin, change brightness to nine. Okay, Garmin, change brightness to seven. Let's try something else here. Okay, Garmin, change volume to eight. Another thing we can use is for recording. Okay, Garmin, start recording. And these screens will go away. Don't worry about touching the OK button. And we can uh, stop it as well. There is a slight delay, but you can see now the camera shows it's recording. OK, Garmin, stop recording. Here's another command you're going to find handy. OK, Garmin, take me to McDonald's. Result would you like? One. Going to McDonald's. Please drive to highlighted route. Now I chose one because I know that's the closest. That's the way they order things. When you make that command, it's going to show all sorts of McDonald's and I wanted the closest one. So the other thing we can do is we can also stop a route. Right now we're on a route and uh, once I get there, I can just say, okay, Garmin, stop route. Okay, route canceled. And you know, that'll do it. We, uh, we already know about phone calls, so we won't review that again. But uh, I just wanted to show you there's some really neat commands that will keep you safer by using the hands-free feature. All right, we're gonna talk about tips. The first tip I wanna give you is make sure you get yourself a good case with dividers. Keep those cables away from that GPS glass and you won't have a bunch of scratches on it. And uh, that's going to make your your unit last a long time. My old Garmin's been around 10 years and still kicking. So uh, get yourself a good case. The other thing I want to talk about is how you can get the owner's manual without uh, using it on your GPS. Maybe you want to download the PDF. So just go to uh, Google. You're going to type in Garmin space drive cam space 76 space manual and it should be at the top of your uh, selections that Google found for you. Just make sure that the website ends with Garmin.com and uh, you can click on that and uh, once you click on that you should be able to download it as well. If you do want to save it to your hard drive on your laptop or PC you know, just open up that link to the manual that I gave you and uh, you'll see an arrow that points down. If you click on that, it'll download it. In the case of Windows 10 or 11, it's going to download it to your downloads folder and then, you know, copy and paste it up to your desktop for or your documents for future use. Okay, here's a tip for you. If you find yourself in a hotel that has Wi-Fi that requires you to go to a browser, well, it's not going to help you with your GPS. So just use your phone as a hotspot. In the case of a Apple iPhone, all we got to do is go into settings. And once we're in there, we go to personal hotspot. And we set our password on it. It's got to be at least eight characters. And... Turn on that button there. Now all we have to do is go to our GPS, hit the gear, and go to wireless networks. And let's go to search for networks. And there's my phone. Let's click on that. Let's type in the uh, password, which is drive cam. Seventy six. Okay.
So we're connected to my phone now and we're good to go. So now we can go into our gallery and select the footage we want to go up to the cloud. And by doing so, we have uh, an extra copy up there. Don't forget, to, if you only have the freebie 24 hour um, cloud program with Vault, you need to upgrade that. If it were me and I was on the road and I needed footage for an accident, I would definitely go with the 30 day for 10 bucks because it's month to month. So anyways, that tip will help you get out of a jam with uh, a shortage on Wi-Fi. And the last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about memory. Now, I know this unit does not have a memory card for the maps, and usually you don't need that by default, but it does have a, a, a 16 gigabyte uh, micro SD card for the storage on the dash cam. Well, I don't think that's quite enough. I think that card's going to get overwritten so many times, and you'll find out the more research you do that these micro SDs do go bad. Anyways, uh, the 128 gig, the best card you can get out there with the best warranty is the SanDisk Max Endurance. And, you know, you're going to pay about 25 bucks for the 128 gig card. The beauty of that is, is it's got a 10-year uh, warranty. So as long as you're buying it from a reputable dealer on Amazon, you're good. If you do go for the 256, I think that's got a 15-year warranty. So enough said about that and the tips. And I think it's time to get this show on the road. Let's load this Garmin into my F-150 and take it for a spin. All right, I decided to change the dash cam settings from car to truck in order for the uh, forward collision and lane departure warnings to be more accurate. So let's go to the gear and let's go to dash cam and camera placement. And we want uh, vehicle height. In my case, I've got a pickup truck, so we'll do a pickup and hit save well i'm pleased with the size of the uh, display compared to my old new v50 and uh they haven't failed me in the volume department that's uh, working good for me and i don't know about you but all this configuration has gotten me hungry Let's uh, turn my dash cam on. Okay, Garmin, start recording. Okay, Garmin, take me to McDonald's. Which result would you like? Number one. Going to McDonald's. In one half mile, turn left. That's pretty cool. It gave me a little warning for, uh, school zone up here. I like that. You know, that's another thing I love about the Garmin is it shows the speed limit. It's got a speed limit sign right there. A lot of your phone apps just don't have that. And uh, I like that. It keeps me out of trouble. In one quarter mile, turn left, then take the first right. And sure enough, there's our speed zone. Let's get down to 25. I like how it turns red when you're going too fast too. I'll slow it down just to keep Garmin happy. Turn left at the traffic light, then take the first right.
Turn right, then take the first left. You know, I kind of like left. this dash cam. You know, I've never had a dash cam before, and you know, I feel secure knowing that if somebody else makes a mistake that causes me to have an accident. Turn left, then take the first left. Okay, Garmin, stop route. Okay, route canceled. You know, I feel good knowing that I've got something that's admissible in court. You know, somebody says they didn't run a stop sign or a, a red light, and they do, so. Anyways, uh, let's break it off here for a minute while I place my order. You know, I'm pretty happy with uh, doing all my homework on this GPS. I, I think it's got way more features than I expected. And uh, I, don't, I don't think I could have made a better choice. And, you know, I've, I've been a Garmin fan for a long time. You know, these are the guys who invented GPS navigation back in the 80s. So, um, you know, I no, no bash in the other guys, but, uh, you know, I... I like the idea of uh, sticking with people who know the technology. Here's another feature I didn't show you before. It's uh, got a nice little weather app built right into it. And that's nice, you know, you get your weather at a glance all those days. And I don't know, all this, all this work and configuration uh, makes me want to travel. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Pompano Brownie channel. Okay, Garmin, take me to Walt Disney World. Going to Walt Disney World on I-4 in the Florida Turnpike in Orlando, FL. Go. Turn left on Brewerton Road, then take the first right. Well, I better hurry up if I'm going to be back before dinner. Turn right at the traffic light. <laughs>